Today we're going to look at a particularly aesthetic equation. So let's say, for instance, you have a four-digit number, and that four-digit number has digits x, y, z, w. So I put the line over it, meaning those are digits. So that isn't the product of x times y times z times w. And also, well, in this setting, we're assuming that x, y, z, and w are really base 10 digits. So they're between 0 and 9. And our goal is to determine when it's possible for this four-digit number to be the sum of the squares of the first two digits and the second two digits. Or I guess more generally, let's say we have a 2n digit number. The first n digits are x1 through xn, and the second are y1 through yn. And we're to determine when this is equal to the square of the first n digits plus the square of the second n digits. So I really like this. I think it's a really nice looking question. So I guess let's maybe look at this first case first, and then we will, well, not just look at this second case, but we'll generalize this more general version. Okay, so let's observe that for this first case, we are really dealing with groupings of two digits at a time. So we might as well group those together. So let's maybe set capital A equal to the two digit number with digits X and Y. And then we'll set capital B equal to the two digit number with digits Z and W. So that means that we have A and B are between zero and a hundred. I guess not including zero and not including a hundred. How do we know that they're not equal to zero? Well, if either of these is equal to zero, well, the, the situation is kind of boring. I guess you could maybe look at the case where B was zero, zero, but I'll let you do that on your own. Okay, so now let's translate our goal equation up here into a setting with A and B. Let's observe that this left-hand side can be written as 100A plus B. That's what moves the digits x, y over two places. And then the right-hand side is simply a squared plus b squared. Now, moving some things around, pretty quickly we have something that is just begging us to complete the square. So notice we'll have a squared minus 100a plus b squared minus b is equal to zero. But like I said, this is really begging for us to complete the square. But that being said, we can't complete the square in this case unless we maybe multiply by four. And that's just keeping in mind that we want to stay inside of the integers. We can't complete the square over here within the integers without scaling this a little bit. So let's start by multiplying this whole equation by four. That'll give us four a squared minus 400a plus 4b squared minus 4b equals 0. And now, well, we want to add something to the left-hand side and the right-hand side so that we've got perfect square trinomials there. So here we'll add 100 squared, and here we'll add 1. But that means over here I need to add 10,001. That's just to make sure that our equation still holds. And then let's look at this obvious grouping that we have in the purple parentheses and then the peach colored parentheses and see that we can in fact factor that. We'll factor this first one as 2a minus 100 squared and then we'll factor the second one as 2b minus 1 squared. And then over here we have 10,001. But let's observe that 2a minus 100 and 2b minus 1 are both integers. So we've expressed 10,001 as the sum of two integers. But the trick here is to look at all of the ways of expressing 10,001 as the sum of two integers and distribute those across what we have right here for a and b. And then we'll, we'll have equations for a and b. So kind of the first obvious way is to write this as 100 squared plus 1 squared. That's definitely expressing this as the sum of two integers. 
And then, well, there's another way as well. We can write this as 65 squared plus 76 squared. And I've done videos on the channel before about expressing in numbers as sums of two squares. And there's actually an algorithm for getting this 65 squared plus 76 squared, looking at the prime factorization. But I'll let you look into that on your own. But that gives us a set of equations that we could solve. Notice that we could have 2a minus 100 equal to 100. And then we could have 2b minus minus one equals one. So that's definitely a possibility. But let's observe that that means that a is equal to 100, which contradicts something that we have at the beginning. So this is actually an impossibility. I guess we get one other case where we could have 2a minus 100 equals one and 2b minus one equals 100. But notice 2b minus 1 needs to be odd, so that means that it can't be 100. But I guess that's going to take care of both possibilities that arise from this first writing as a sum of two squares, this 100 squared plus 1 squared, and neither of those gave us a solution. So that means from here we should probably look at this second version of the sum of two squares for 10,001. And let's use the fact that 2b minus 1 equals an odd number, and we only have one odd number over there, 65. And 2a minus 100 is even. We only have one even number over there, 76. So that means we have the following possibilities. We have 2a minus 100 equals plus minus 76. Observe that we really need plus minus 76, because another solution over here would be minus 76 squared. And then we could have 2b minus 1 equals plus minus 65. Now, let's see what that leads us to. So this one right here leads us to a being equal to either, let's see, 12 or 88. And that's because we can take the plus or the minus. So for the plus, we have 2a equals 176, but that means a is equal to, like I said, 88. But then with the minus, we would have 2a equals 24. That would be a equals 12. Now let's see for this other case. Notice here we actually don't have the ability to have both plus or minus. Because we have a minus there, then b would be negative. So we really just have plus 65. But that means that 2b is 66. In other words, b is 33. But now we can group those first two digits with those last two digits, and we have a solution to our problem. Notice that we have 1,233 is equal to 12 squared plus 33 squared. And then the other case that comes out of this is 8,833 is equal to 88 squared plus 33 squared. And those are the only possibilities of four digit numbers that break apart like this as the sum of the first two digits squared plus the second two digits squared. That being said, let's see if we can look at a more general strategy for these types of problems. In order to look for a more general strategy, let's look at our equation right here and let's observe that we can group some things together here. We could group the first n digits into a number that I'll call, well, let's, for sake of argument, call it capital A again. So that's going to be x1 up to xn. And then capital B will be the number with the digits y1 up to yn. And now we can rewrite our equation here as it's going to be a times 10 to the n plus b is equal to a squared plus b squared. But here we have a and b are less than 10 to the n because they're meant to represent n-digit numbers. Okay, but actually I'd like to generalize this a little bit more and think about, well, what about some sort of general base? So let's say n base b, we could have capital A and capital B between 0 and b, and this turns into a times little b plus capital B is equal to a squared plus b squared, capital A squared plus b squared. 
where before our base was 100, we were really working base 100. And in this setup right here, we're working base 10 to the n. So that means that really solving a Diophantine equation like this right here is the general strategy. So let's see if we can do that. So let's maybe bring this up to the top and move some things around. So I wanna write this as a squared and then minus capital A times B, and then plus B squared minus B equals zero. And now I'm gonna do the same kind of thing I did before. So let's multiply by four everywhere. And well, that doesn't change anything. So multiplying zero by four just keeps it zero. And then we can think about completing the square. So we can complete the square here by adding b squared, the base squared, and complete the square here by adding one. But that means we've got to do this on the other side of the equation too, so little b squared plus one. But that gives us this nice sum of squares problem. Now let's observe we have two times capital A minus the base squared, plus two times capital B minus one squared is equal to little b squared plus one. But then the idea here is to re-express this as the sum of squares. Like perhaps it would be the sum x squared plus y squared. And then what we would do is have that lead to equations. For instance, 2a minus b equals plus minus x. And then 2b minus 1 equals plus minus y. And then from there, you could see which ones are solvable, and that would give us our solution in the end. So now that we've looked at a general setup, let's maybe look at a kind of cute example in base 12. So here, we're gonna say our B is base 12, like I just said. Okay, so that means that the equation that we would have is 2a minus 12 squared plus 2b minus 1 squared equals 145. So that's 12 squared plus 1 squared. You don't get any solutions from the trivial representation of the right-hand side as a sum of squares. You've got to really look for another representation of the right-hand side as a sum of squares. So that means in our problem down here, we need to express 145 as a sum of squares. So in fact, we can do that as plus minus eight squared, and then plus plus minus nine squared. That's because 64 plus 81 is 145. Okay, but now that builds us some equations. Notice that 12a minus 12, that's gonna be an even number, so that's gotta be equal to plus minus eight. So we've got 2a minus 12 equals plus minus eight, and then 2b minus one has to be plus minus nine. But in fact, it can only be positive nine because B can't be negative. But now observe that in this case, we get two values for A pretty quickly. Notice that A could be equal to two or it could be equal to 10. But B can only have one value. Notice that B must be equal to five. But putting this back in terms of our maybe equation over here, observe what we have is two times 12 plus five is equal to two squared plus five squared. So that's in the first representation. So that's from this first solution with a equals two. But we could also write that as two five base 12 is equal to two base 12 squared plus five base 12 squared. But then what about the one where a is equal to 10? Well, notice that's gonna be attached to 10 times 12 plus five is equal to 10 squared plus five squared. But we could also write that with base 12 digits. So 10 in base 12 is often written with the letter A. So this would be A5 base 12 is equal to A base 12 squared plus five base 12 squared. And well, there you have it. You've got this nice strategy for completing these maybe symmetric squared digit problems. And that's a good place to stop.